We've decoded the intel from the First Order spy, and it confirms the worst. Somehow Palpatine returned. We live in a time where Star Wars, well, Star Wars sucks. Disney has had the rights to Star Wars for over a decade now, and ever since that pivotal point back in 2017 when The Last Jedi came out, it has just been a downward spiral that they have never been able to dig themselves out of. And in more recent history, Disney has decided to take the route of pumping out a bunch of extremely dull TV shows that for the most part just feel very meaningless. Remember when Star Wars used to have a certain magic to it that you'd feel while watching it? When George was making Star Wars, even though not everything that he made was the same in terms of quality, you could always feel something special in his work. And I have not felt that from Disney Star Wars in a long time besides every once in a blue moon. But when you dig through the sea of shit that this company has produced, there is one project from Disney that came out back in 2016 that I actually really like. And in light of the state that Star Wars is in right now, I've actually grown to appreciate it more as time goes by. And that film is Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Rogue One is so great because it's able to achieve exactly what it's set out to be. One of the reasons I think why George Lucas Star Wars was able to capture the hearts of so many was because all of his work felt sort of revolutionary in a way. In the sense where you felt like you had never seen something like this before. And Rogue One is the only thing that Disney has produced that evokes that same feeling in me. This film feels revolutionary. Never before on the big screen had we seen a Star Wars story that wasn't an episodic film. And although of course there have been many stories not related to the episodes on a much smaller scale, Seeing a story offer a unique perspective on such a large scale like this within the Star Wars universe makes it feel incredibly unique. It's not about the larger galaxy-wide struggle between the Jedi and Sith. It's about ordinary people and the sacrifices they make in an attempt to eradicate an ultimate evil from the galaxy. People may never remember their names like they do Luke Skywalker or Han Solo, but they were just as instrumental in taking down the Empire as they were. Who knew that one line from the opening crawl of A New Hope and the people behind it had such a massive impact on the galaxy that most most people will never know about. And I think that's kind of the whole point of the film. They pay the ultimate price for the promise of a better future, even though they know that years from now, probably nobody will remember them. And in my opinion, that's one of the most honorable things that one can do. This movie also has a very different tone to the rest of the films, and it fits the story perfectly. It's very dark from start to finish, and a lot more gritty than the episodic films. And this darker tone really helps get across some of the messages and key elements. It shows us the cost of war and the sacrifices made by some these more unknown rebels in the larger context of the Star Wars universe. And it makes the story much more emotionally resonant than if they would have decided to make the tone more similar to that of the episodes. It also can't go without being mentioned. And this is one thing that I think that everybody can agree on, regardless of whether you like the film or not, and that's that Rogue One is visually stunning. This film boasts some of the most impressive visual effects I have ever seen in my life. The cinematography is fantastic, and it does such a good job of capturing some of the emotions that the script was trying to evoke, especially in the third act. Everything on screen captures that iconic Star Wars aesthetic perfectly. Now a lot of people think that The Last Jedi is the best looking Star Wars film, and if you feel that way, I can most certainly respect that because The Last Jedi is a great visual spectacle in its own right. However, I personally think that Rogue One is the most beautiful looking Star Wars ever put to screen. But most certainly the thing I like the most about Rogue One has to be the story itself. It's a very self-contained story, but fits very well within the broader Star Wars canon. It doesn't take away or change in any negative way how I feel or think about the original trilogy. It expands upon what we knew about the time period and seamlessly connects into episode four. It gives us context to everything that we didn't know we wanted and just enhances the overall Star Wars lore. I remember leaving the theater back in 2016, and I remember thinking I had just seen a film that was a hybrid of sorts between a Star Wars film and a World War II film. Now, at the time, I didn't quite know how to feel about that, because it was very different to what I was used to. But as time went on, that's why I grew to like it so much. I really like World War II films. I really enjoy studying and consuming content related to that part of history. And one of the most common themes you'll find in those types of films is everything related to sacrifice. And Rogue One was the first, and still to this day the only Star Wars film, where at its core, it's about sacrifice. And as I got a little older and came to truly understand on a deeper level that that's what Rogue One was, I grew to appreciate this film more than I already did. Because I think that sacrifice is one of the most emotionally gripping and moving themes in all of storytelling. Now I've been going on for a couple minutes now about all the things that I really enjoy about Rogue One, but just like all films, there are some flaws and issues that a lot of people have with this film that I think are worth addressing. The biggest one that I generally hear pointed out is that the story is good, but the characters within that story aren't 
aren't the greatest. Now, all of our protagonists in this film are completely brand new, so there was no prior knowledge or emotional connection to any of these characters prior to the film coming out. But even though that may be the case, I do think that the storytellers gave us and developed a set of characters that serve the story well. They all come from very different walks of life and struggle to work together initially, but eventually put their differences aside to work as a team with the goal of saving the galaxy from a massive super weapon. But I don't think it's the characters as a group that most people take issue with. Instead, it's the development of the characters on an individual level that a lot of people thought was lacking. And while I do think it's a little over the top when people say that these characters aren't good and they suck, I think that their frustrations are partially justified. The main character in this story is Jin Urso. And while she certainly isn't the most interesting character from this universe, I think that she was serviceable enough for this story. She by far gets the most development because the story is about her, and Felicity Jones is much more of an engaging screen presence than fucking Daisy Ridley. <laughs> I will say that Jin's motivation for wanting to risk it all in service of the Rebellion in the third act I did feel was a little forced and didn't get there naturally. For the first two acts, her entire goal is to save her father from the Empire, and she doesn't necessarily care about the Rebellion. But when her father dies, she kind of just says, fuck it. Let's risk it all for the cause. And it's fine. It's not the end of the world. It just wasn't the greatest from a writing perspective because it happened a little too fast in my opinion. Our other main protagonist is Cassian Andor. And I will admit that in this film specifically, he isn't the most interesting. He has basic character traits and motivations, but nothing that really makes him stand out. He was fine for the story and played his part in the Rebels' victory, but I did find him to be quite bland. And when he eventually died, I didn't care as much about him dying as I did for Jin. One thing that Cassian has going for now though is that a lot of people, including myself, view his character differently in light of the recent Andor show, which was actually pretty good. I know it's a little bit of a cheat to use other forms of media to enhance your story, but hey, I watched it, I can't unsee it, and I like Cassian as a character more because of it. But I actually think the character I liked the most from this film was K2SO. Now this may be one of the more controversial things I say in this video, but I honestly think that K2SO is the only good droid character we've seen since Return of the Jedi in 1983. Ever since the original trilogy, whenever a droid is put in the story, it just feels like the only reason there's a droid is because, well, it's Star Wars and therefore there must be a droid. They all suck, the audience doesn't care about them, and most of the time there's no real reason for them being in the story. But K2SO actually helps enhance the story. Even though he may be a droid, you get the sense that he cares deeply about his team and the mission at hand. He doesn't just feel like a nothing presence in the background that nobody cares about. He's an integral part to this team. His death I actually found to be the most sad and tragic, which is saying a lot considering he's a droid and not even a person. I'll also briefly mention the smaller characters on the crew. Baze and Chirrut are a duo within the group, and while they are aesthetically very cool, there isn't really a whole lot to them that the film explores. I think that Chirrut was the more interesting out of the two though, just because he's force sensitive and he uses the force in a pretty unique way compared to that of the Jedi, but besides that, they mostly just feel like sidekicks for the whole film. However, one thing that they do do between these two which I really liked a lot, was they made it clear very early on that Baze doesn't believe in the Force at all. He's kind of like Han Solo in Episode 4. He thinks it's all just hocus pocus and a bunch of bullshit. But in the third act, when Chirrut is about to die, he comforts him by acknowledging that the Force is real. It's very subtle, but it brings a major sense of emotionality. This guy, who hasn't believed in it his whole life, in his last moments becomes one with the Force in a sense before he dies. And that character arc of coming full circle, I thought was one of the most powerful scenes in the movie. There's also Bodhi, but most would agree that Bodhi isn't really that good. He really just serves as a vessel to move the plot forward in the opening act, and that's about it. The film doesn't really take much time to develop this guy at all, and as a result, I didn't really care that much when he died. So that's all the protagonist, and it was definitely a mixed bag in terms of quality. But the villains in this film are all phenomenal. So Rogue One has a mix of new villains and established villains, and they all work really well. The main antagonist of this film is Orson Krennic, and the thing I liked the most about him was the constant power struggle between him and Tarkin throughout the whole film. Krennic is a man with great ambition, but ultimately thinks that he's more important to this empire than he actually is, and eventually comes to realize this the hard way. Our brief screen time with our returning villains are also welcome additions. It was a little jarring seeing a CGI Tarkin at first, but after about 10 seconds I completely forgot that they resurrected this dude from the dead, and just enjoyed every second that he was on screen. Tarkin makes for a great obstacle that Krennic is faced with, and his inclusion in this film was very well implemented. Also, Darth Vader is just fucking awesome. He only shows up twice 
in the entire movie. But because he only shows up twice, it just makes those couple times when he does show up that much more impactful. This first scene with Krennic was really cool, and seeing Vader put the fear of God into him in such a Vader-like fashion was incredible to watch. There's also this masterpiece of a scene. <laughs> The hallway scene is hands down the best scene in all of Disney Star Wars. It's not even close. And besides the fact that it was a superb scene in of itself, it perfectly ties into episode four, which makes it that much better than if it was just a random scene that was thrown in there. And with that, that wraps up my thoughts about all the characters. Now, another big flaw that people often point out, which I feel is worth mentioning, is Rogue One is often criticized for not being paced very well. And this, I do think is a valid criticism. The first two acts are definitely a little bit clunky. And in particular, the first act is pretty all over the place. The opening 10 minutes are actually very good, and that scene specifically is paced very well, but after this, the film kicks into maximum overdrive. For the next 20 to 30 minutes or so, it is constantly jumping here to here to here, and it feels like so much is happening when in reality, not a lot is actually happening. And it's pretty overwhelming, I think is the right term to use, especially on a first watch. They could have cleaned this part up and done away with a lot of it, because most of it I didn't feel was that necessary. I don't think this film really settles in and is able to find its footing until the second act when they go to Edu. But even though this film struggles with its pacing in the first half, it does feel like it all builds up very nicely to the climax in the third act. The final act of this film is one of the best singular acts in all of Star Wars. It is so emotionally gripping and has you hooked from start to finish. It is so good that it really makes you forget about some of the shortcomings of the first two acts. Whenever anybody thinks about Rogue One, they think about this section of the film. It was an absolute spectacle from the moment they arrive on Scarif to the end credits. And with that, that pretty much wraps up my thoughts about Rogue One. This film succeeds in so many ways, and is one of the best examples of a story that helps expand on the main films. And that was Disney's ultimate goal at the time when making these Star Wars story movies, to expand upon the universe in a meaningful way. And I really wish they didn't give up on making these types of films after Solo bombed. After that movie, Disney completely changed up their strategy and decided to create all of their live action stories in a series format. And I don't think that's entirely a bad thing, because series have the luxury of time that a film doesn't, and you're really able to go very in depth into specific characters and stories. But I do want to see Disney return to making some of their stories in a film format, because at its heart, Star Wars is a film franchise. And Rogue One is a shining example of that. And it's something that I hope one day, Star Wars will return to. Well, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed some of my thoughts about Rogue One, and if you did, do me a favor by leaving a like and hitting that subscribe button. If you wanna be notified about when I post my next video, hit that notification bell. But anyways, that's all I got for today. I'll see you next time.